Hey everybody! In this video, we're going to teach you how to create spiral text in Corel Draw. We're going to teach you how to create the text, we're going to teach you how to create the spirals, and we're going to teach you how to apply the text to the spiral. Now, I'm using Corel Draw X8, but this technique should work in any version of Corel Draw like X5 x6 or x7 so we're gonna jump on over here to page 2 and get started so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a rectangle shape so we'll grab the rectangle tool come over here we'll draw a rectangle and we'll come up here in the properties bar we want the rectangle to be about 8 inches long by about 0.3 inches tall and that'll give us the right dimensions that we're looking for now what we want to do is come over and we want to right click on that rectangle and we want to go down and convert that to curves now we want to grab our shape tool over here and you'll notice that you can see the, the the points on each corner so we're going to adjust two of these points so with our shape tool selected we want to just click and highlight that point and we want to arrow that up 10 spaces so we're going to arrow it up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then we're going to do the same thing on the top we're going to select the top node arrow that down 10 spaces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's going to give us the wedge shape that we're looking for to create the text. So on the left side, the text will be taller. On the right side, the text will be shorter. So when we apply this to the spiral, you'll see the big text on the outside of the spiral. And then it'll spiral down and the text will be small in the middle of the spiral. So that's why we have to create this wedge shape to fit the text to. So let's just come over here and we'll right click on the, the no uh, color to take the stroke off. And then we'll just come down here and pick a fill color just so we can see what we have here. So we have our wedge shape done. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create our text. And you want to use a font that's going to be easy to read. You can use a bold font. You can use a medium bold. You can try different fonts to get the look that you want. We're going to go over here and grab our text tool. Click here on the page. And we're just going to top some text. And one more time. So drag that over here back onto our page. So we have our text and we're going to use a font called College Solid. You could use Impact. You could use any one of these College Black fonts. But um, you should uh, just pick a font that you like that's easy to read. You may have to experiment with a few different fonts and uh, to, like I said to get the look that you want. So we're going to use this. We're going to click it. We're going to drag up and we're going to right click to make a copy of it. That way we still got this text that's live text and we can go back and make changes to it and we can make you know different versions of this with different fonts we can do less characters more characters and just kind of see how it gets applied to the spiral so it's always good to keep a live version so you don't have to go back and set all that up again so you want to try to keep it around 70 maybe 80 characters 
but you can experiment with different fonts and different sizes and just kind of see how it works. So anyway, we're going to uh, form this text to our shape. With the text selected, we're going to come over here to the envelope docker. So if you don't have that envelope docker open, just come over to window, come down to dockers, go down to effects, and then just click here on the envelope docker to open it up. Or you can press Control F7 on your keyboard and that'll open it up too. Now that you have the envelope docker open, what you want to do is make sure you have your text selected. You want to come over to the envelope docker, click this little dropper, come over here to the green uh, wedge shape that we created earlier, click inside there, and then your text will take on the shape of that box. After you have that done, like I said, you can come in here and you can change your text to something else. You can change your font. Let's just change our font to, uh, let's just go ahead and try impact. And to me, I think that's a little bit long. So I'm just going to take one instance of that off. Have my text selected. Click on the eyedropper again. Click my shape again. Now that has the same shape. Now what we want to do is we want to open up our artistic media docker. And again, if you don't have that open, you can go to window, dockers, come down to effects again and click on artistic media. And that'll open up the artistic media palette or docker. I'm sorry. You can turn these off, turn the presets and the object sprayers off. That way their list isn't so long. But um, what you want to do is you just want to select one of these, drag it over to your docker, and drop it. You have to, if you drop it way over here, it's not going to see it. You have to drop it in here so that it'll see it. So just drop it in there. It'll say, what kind of stroke would you like to create? Just tell it you want to create a brush. It'll ask you to name it. So we'll just make a name for it. And uh, we'll just call that number two. Save. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Drag it over. Drop it in. Create a brush name that one number three and we'll save that one towards the bottom of our list you should see them down here around the bottom somewhere another thing about this lettering that we created to the shape of that box since we left the font as a live text even though it's in that shape we can still change the font so if we wanted to do another one, we could just click on one of them, come back up to the font menu, click on another font, and it'll take on that shape because you've enveloped it, but it's still live text inside the envelope. So again, we could just take that one, drag it over, drop it in, make another one. Um, I want to show you one other way to do this. Um, there's a little uh, macro software called a Design Wizard. And if you have that or are interested in it, you can purchase this. It does a lot of cool stuff in Corel Draw. It only works inside of Corel Draw, but it does a lot of cool things, has a lot of cool settings. Um, you can use it to easily knock text out of backgrounds and just all kinds of cool stuff like that. And they also have this, there's a little button here called Magic Envelope. So if you have your text, you can top it out.
and uh, we'll just choose a font and then what you can do is you select your box you select your text and then you just hit this magic envelope button and it automatically fits it to the box so that's another way you can uh, fit your text to the boxes it with this uh, design wizard software actually it's a macro that runs inside of Corel draw and you can use it to do t-shirt designs and all kinds of stuff like that it's really cool if you want to check it out I'll put a link down in the uh, description and you can check it out just wanted to show you that I went ahead and dropped those other two in here that we made those last two that we did I'm just going to move all these up here kind of out of the way. We don't really need them anymore right now. Now we're going to draw some spirals. We're going to come down here and if you don't have the spiral tool already selected it may be on this graph paper. You want to come down here right above the text tool click on the little flyout menu select the spiral or you can press A on your keyboard and we just want to draw some spirals after you select the spiral tool you'll notice there are some settings up here just for the spiral the first one is the number of revolutions the spiral will make as you drag it out the second one is symmetrical which means there'll be an equal number of space between each revolution and the uh, logarithmic there'll be more space between each revolution the further you get away from the center this setting here is the expansion factor you can change the amount of space between each revolution you can vary it but it only works with the logarithmic spiral it doesn't work with the symmetrical so let's draw out some spirals using some different settings and just kind of see how these work first we're going to do a symmetrical and we're going to do three revolutions so we just click and drag and you can see there's one two three one two three so that's three revolutions we up this to four drag out a spiral you're gonna see that they're a little tighter but there's one two three four one two three four so now we'll change it to five drag out a spiral and you can see the more revolutions you make the tighter the spiral gets so with what we're trying to do we don't want a lot of revolutions because then the text is going to be really hard to read. We'll just drag these three up here for a minute. Now let's draw out a few spirals with the logarithmic. We're going to drop that back down to three. Actually let's start with two. And we're going to leave the decay at a hundred. Let's move this page down just a little bit. I know I keep saying the word decay instead of spiral expansion factor, but different applications like Adobe Illustrator call it something different. In Illustrator it's called decay, Corel Draw it's called expansion factor. So just know that if I do say decay, that I mean expansion factor. We're going to come down here and draw the spiral. And you can see that the further away from the center you get, the more decay that occurs, meaning that the rotations get looser and looser as you come out. So at 100%, you're going to get uh, the most amount of expansion from here to here. If we change this to 50% and draw another spiral, you'll see there's not quite as much expansion. So again, the further from center we get, the more expansion occurs. 
if we change this to one and draw a spiral, you'll see that there's not much difference in the expansion at all. In fact, it's pretty even from the middle all the way around to the end. So this one was 100%, this one was 50%, and then this one is 1%. Let's go back to the spiral tool. We'll do three rotations, and we'll do 100%, and we'll do a spiral. And if we change this to four rotations, it's going to be too much because when we drag it out, the center just gets so tight that you'll never be able to read the letters in there. So we're going to keep it at three for the logarithmic one. We'll just leave that at three. But we will change the decay a little bit. We'll do one about 75%. And then we'll do another one at 50%. Let's just grab our pick tool here and we'll move everything up. Now we want to apply the text that we created to these shapes. So we we'll click on the shape, come over here in our uh, artistic media palette where we save those text shapes and with our spiral highlighted we, you want to select the artistic media brush right here and when we click on the text it applies it to the spiral. So after you apply the text you'll notice that it's reversed you got the big part on the inside and the small part on the outside. So we need to grab our shape tool, click on that. So you select that little dotted line, come up here. This is the uh, reverse direction tool. We'll just click that. That'll reverse the direction of our text. Now what we can do is go back to our artistic media brush and you come up here and you can right here you can adjust the size of your the, of your brush so what you want to do is you can arrow it up and it, it'll make your it'll make the image bigger to fit in the spiral better all right so let's go to the next one we'll click on this one get our artistic media brush Come back over here, we'll select this, this third one here. And again, let's reverse the direction. Shape tool. Click on it where the little dotted lines are, are uh, selected. Reverse the direction. Now this one is too big. So instead of making it bigger, we need to make this one a little smaller. So I click on our artistic mini brush. We'll come up here to the stroke weight and we'll just arrow it down. We can just, uh, you know, reduce the size of that. So for this spiral, since the rotations are so close together, it would probably be better to have text like this that's not in a wedge shape. So that way it'll be even all the way down. This looks like it's pretty long, so I'm thinking we probably need to top this out a few more times. That should be good enough. So then since we're not putting this in an envelope shape, we'll need to convert this to curves so that it'll recognize it. So right click, convert to curves, 
Now it's just a graphic image. Still have this one up here that's live text, so we can change it any time. So let's grab this one, drag it down here to the palette, drop it in. We'll name that one. We'll just name this one number six. Now we'll select this spiral, select the artistic media brush again. Then we'll come down here to our artistic media. And this should be the one we just dropped in there. We'll click on that. Puts the text in. Let's make that a little bit smaller so it's readable. There we go. But you can see that works a lot better with text that's not beveled, just regular text. And you could always come in here and edit these nodes to fix that R and the H. Okay, so now let's do these other spirals down here. And uh, let's just move those up a little bit out of the way. Maybe just move these down a little bit. We're going to select this first spiral. I'm going to select the artistic media brush. We'll just try this. Uh, we'll just try the fourth one here that we created. Click on that. Again, it comes in reversed. Shape tool. We'll just double click on that to select it. And we'll reverse the direction. And you can see here in the middle, it's wound really tight. So we want to grab our artistic media brush, come up here to the stroke, and we'll just lower that stroke a little bit to like 0.5. And so that makes it a little easier to read way down there. You can probably zoom in and adjust those nodes a little bit to, to fix that. So if we grab our shape tool, we'll just zoom in to here. Grab our shape tool. click on that and we can just move these little nodes around to get it to fit a little better so that in may actually look like an in actually I'm just going to delete that one node right there because that's the one that's giving me problems and we'll just reshape this a little bit. So you can see the end is a little easier to read now. It's not so crazy looking. So yeah, we can just come in and adjust the nodes like that. Let's zoom back out here. Now you can see it's a little easier to read way down in the bottom. And like I was saying, different top styles are going to look a little different, like up here. This end may be a little easier to read than that one. So you just have to try out different ones and see what works best. So let's click this next spiral. And we'll click this fifth one that we created. Shape tool. Click on the little dotted line, reverse the direction. And that one looks pretty good. I think that was, uh, I don't remember which font that was, but that looks pretty good. We could always grab our artistic media brush, make a little bigger stroke. And again, we got that little problem with the end right down here in the middle. We could zoom in and fix it like we did this other one, not a problem. So anyway, that's how we get the text on the spiral. We just create an artistic media brush and apply it to the spiral. Now the other cool thing about these, this text is, let's just move up here a little bit. Uh, if you have the artistic media brush selected, you can select one of these, and then you can actually use your artistic media brush, draw a line, and it'll apply that text that you just did to a line. You can do a straight line, you can do arch line. Uh, I mean, you could use these any way you wanted to. 
and uh, once you get done with the spiral and it looks the way you want it to look you've adjusted the nodes you've gotten every all the spacing the way you want it and everything looks great and you want to put it in your artwork what you can do is you can click on it drag it over right click and make a copy of it that way you still got the live one you can change it up you can change the brush you can you know whatever you want to do you still got this one you can make changes to but this one you're going to put it in your artwork so what you want to do is select it come up here to our object and break artistic media group apart and then that will take your spiral off so now that shape you can reuse a spiral too but that shape is locked in so you can't um, adjust it you can't adjust it on the spiral anymore that's just a graphic you can scale it and um, you can change colors you could come over here interactive fill tool and you could apply a pattern to it you can apply a bitmap fill to it you can even apply a gradient to it you can come over here and choose a different gradient and apply that to it you know you could apply whatever texture whatever textures you have in here you can apply those to it and once you apply the texture you can always use these little this little sliders to adjust your texture um, you can you know drag it out a different way if you want to you can rotate it you can move it you can grab the little handle here and skew it so a lot of different things you can do uh, once you get it the way you you want it then you could come over apply a drop shadow to it presets let's just do a drop shadow like that that's kind of far out though we'll scoot it back in some okay apply a drop shadow to it you could even apply a stroke to the letters if you wanted to apply a stroke. Just click over here, right click on black. That'll apply a stroke to it to kind of give it a definitive edge. You can also in increase the, uh, the size of the stroke. So we got a hairline, uh, outline. We can change the, the weight of the outline. And, uh, you know, Whatever you want to do to it, to put it, you know, however you want to use it, you can apply all kinds of effects to it. So I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. If you have any suggestions on how to improve this technique, please comment below. If you happen to use this technique in a project, please send us a picture or a link so we can see how you applied this technique to your project. And finally, if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.